Welcome to Explore UT 2021. Hi, everybody. Um, we are in the accepted med school admission presentation. Uh, we have with us the director of admissions at Dell Medical School, Joel Debo. Um, and then we have our student panel, uh, three pre-med students, uh, Brianna Middleton, Juan Garcia, and Salvador Carrillo. Um, I am going to kick it off. We're going to start a presentation um, and then we will have questions throughout, throughout the presentation and questions at the end. I will kick it over to Mr. Defoe and the students. Thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with uh, all the aspiring physicians out there and more importantly, thank you to the pre-med students who uh, volunteered to help me out today. And uh, we'll talk a lot about the process to getting to medical school, but they're gonna kind of help me uh, ask questions that were important to them when they were in your spot. So really the, you know, the journey to, to medical school is a, is a lot of different uh, barriers one might think of. They may think of um, obstacles and an unknown, not really knowing how to get there. And so it could be disorienting. It could be bewildering. A student who is in high school who is starting to think about, what do I want to do? What do I want to become? And often they have a lot of different reasons why they're thinking about the different professions and how they started to think about those may be different for everybody. But to talk a little bit about for those who think medicine is the path that they want to go on, uh, how do they start taking that journey? And that journey really starts now. It starts while you're in high school. And so we'll talk a little bit about why, how, when, and who, and what is part of that journey about how you think about going to medical school and, and pursuing a, a profession in, in uh, healthcare. So as um, many of you, if you're in high school, you've already started thinking about medicine. You've already started thinking about um, a career as a physician and about over 30, almost 30% of students who go to medical school uh, began to think about medicine when they were in high school um, or before high school actually, and another 30% while they were in high school. So almost 60% um, of individuals who are in medical school today started thinking about medical school when they were uh, either before high school or in high school. So this is the right time to start thinking about that, but it's not the only time. Uh, some decide after the first years of college that the major that they were pursuing was not what they wanted to do. And so they, they decide to, to investigate medicine at that point. Some, uh, in their, as late as their junior year, uh, some as, as late as their senior year, decide to make this change. And some, after receiving their bachelor's degree, decide that medicine is really their calling and they come back uh, to, or want to change careers to go into, um, into medical school. So the journey really can happen at a lot of different places. Uh, for the folks who are on this video, uh, probably um, are thinking about that journey now and have had a lot of different reasons why they are motivated for medicine. And so they may um, uh, have a lot of reasons why they, they've decided that medical schools or the, that being a physician is the reason, uh, is, their, is their calling. Uh, but it's really time to start taking uh, reflection on what is your motivation? Why, why is medicine your cho chosen career or what you think might be your chosen career? And I'll ask the students who are on the panel about, you know, when did you start thinking about uh, medicine as a career? And when did you, um, or what was the motivation for you to choose that, that career? I can start. So for me, it's been a culmination of events, I would say, starting probably in middle school, you know, I feel many have experienced a loss, a significant loss in their life. And so that sparked my interest as well. But just learning more and more about the field throughout high school, going on tours of the medical schools that I had to go on, I just got more enamored by the field. And meeting these people like Juan and Brianna, they just taught me so much more about what it's like to be in a community that is passionate about medicine. It just invigorates that passion even more every day. Um, I could also say that, at least for me, um, I guess the environment um, in which uh, one grows up in also has a major influence, and uh, at least for me, of, of why I wanted to do medicine. 
and kind of what keeps on motivating me today. Um, just this idea of uh, being able to give back um, to where uh, the community which saw you uh, grow up and uh, gave you so many, so much, so many opportunities to succeed is just something that um, that motivates me. Yes, for me, it was an accumulation of different experiences. It started when I was in seventh grade and I learned about all the human body systems and I was fascinated by how our body works. And um, I also liked the idea of helping people. Um, and when I was in high school, um, I experienced sudden hearing loss in my left ear. And at that time, doctors couldn't necessarily identify what I had. So it caused me to go into this world of just researching and learning more about ear anatomy and physiology and how everything is so interconnected. So from those different experiences, that is my main motivation. So I enjoy discovering and solving problems. I wanna help people to overcome obstacles. I want uh, others to be healthy or happy. I appreciate doctors who took care of me when I was sick or had some experience. These, these are, are not uncommon things. I think a lot of people, when they first have contact with the medical profession, whether um, it's through uh, some kind of acute incident, um, which sometimes can be traumatic, uh, or um, a care incident in which uh, somebody was able to help resolve uh, a healthcare issue that somebody had faced, um, it, it starts that interest that sparks that motivation for medicine and wanting to, to, to um, give back to others is an important part of that motivation. Now, another part of um, the, the process of, of moving towards a career in medicine is you, start, you have to start building the foundation of knowledge that is important for you to then practice and care for others. And so the, the, the core competencies or the foundation of, of of information that you need to start to develop in order to grow into a position relate very heavily to the sciences, of course, because you have to become competent in the sciences in order to understand how to care for individuals. Um, and so as a high school student, you need to start thinking about how do I start to prepare that foundation? What courses do I need to take in order to help me develop that? And if you think about a foundation, it really is you're building upon layers. You don't just take a course in science and then that science is forgotten and you move on to another course. What you're taking is really the, the first layer of that foundational knowledge as you grow as an individual and you start to develop a stronger competency in that material. And so obviously science and math are, are foundations in, in uh, developing uh, your understanding as you prepare for medical school. So taking advantage of uh, all of the science courses that you have available to you in high school, taking advantage of advanced placement courses, uh, taking advantage of um, garnering an understanding of the, the uh, foundational aspects of the basic sciences that will be used as you move through your, your college career into, into medicine are important um, activities to be engaged in now. It's not enough to wait until you get into college and begin developing that. You should start doing that foundational knowledge now, developing that now. Um, it's important to also know that, that having an interest in science and math is important. If you do not like science and math, that's an important recognition as well. I mean, that, that if, if you are choosing medicine and you don't really have a passion for either one of these um, uh, topics, it's going to be a very difficult journey for you because so much of the foundation that you have to understand is based in science and math. Now, having said that, those aren't the only subjects you need to have to be a great clinician. You need to also have a good understanding of literature, art, and philosophy. Uh, these are the human aspects of, of, um, of study. It's, it's the humanities. It's the understanding of the human condition. It is not enough to not only have the, the foundational knowledge, but also understand how when people come to you in the most vulnerable time, uh, what they're experiencing and what the human condition is as you think about melding really the art of science and medicine together in the care of, of uh, people. So really being a good student of not only the sciences, but the humanities are an important starting point uh, as you start to develop yourself into a future physician. Salvador. Yes. 
So you mentioned how important it is to have a good foundation of science and math. Would you recommend claiming AP credit for those courses when you get into college? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what's nice about advanced placement credit is that it is, is one of the few times that you have a free shot at credit. So you can, you can take the advanced placement exam. If you don't get the, high, the, the required score, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't show up on your college transcript. If you do get the required score, then you get that credit for that course on your college transcript. What that allows you to do though, is that opens up more time to take other courses. And so what, what, if you are moving in that direction of preparing for medical school, what you probably do is you've got credit for that, that core class, and then you have an opportunity to take the higher level class in that same space while you're in college. So you would take that time to increase your foundational knowledge. So I would recommend if you can take AP credit or dual credit courses that you take advantage of those. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my next slide. <laughs> um, also, as, um, as you start to get involved in, in uh, not only your, your coursework in high school, but taking the opportunity to see what enrichment activities are available to you, whether through your high school, uh, through the, your local community centers, um, through local universities. Uh, many universities have summer uh, science camps or STEM camps. Um, take advantage of those opportunities to get more exposure. This, the, the goal uh, when you're in high school is really to one, start developing that foundational knowledge and then start to engage yourself in activities that help answer the question, is medicine what you wanna do? Is medicine the career path that you wanna go on? And so start to take advantage of um, those opportunities. You'll find that um, they open up a whole nother world of opportunities with once you find an enrichment activity, you might discover that that particular campus might have other activities you can get engaged in, for example. So you, you want to start to, to invest in time. It's, it's, a, it is a, it's about how you invest your time. And sometimes it means that you would take a vacation to a week or, or, or during the summer when you're on vacation and engage in something that's academic. So putting forth that extra effort will only give you um, an advantage as you start to think about moving towards a career in medicine. It'll help develop your, your interest. It'll help increase your competency and the material that, you're, that you'll need to be proficient in as you move forward um, in, in your studies. And then I also would encourage you to start reading outside of class. We uh, now, so much of what we read is, is very short content. It is, um, it's oftentimes, um, uh, brief information, sometimes it's an abstract of an article, but we don't really spend the time to read the whole article. We don't spend the time to read books that we're interested in. And so reading is a skill that has, that is, um, I'll use the word plasticity, meaning that it ebbs and flows. And the, the more we practice, the better we get at it. The less we practice, the, the, the more that skill wanes or dis dissipates. So reading outside of the class is really a, a relevant experience um, in preparation for any kind of um, learning as you move forward. Read things that you're passionate about or interested in or things are just fun for you to read, but practicing reading long passages is really kind of working out a muscle all of its own. Now, I know no one right being complained that, that the brain is not a muscle, I understand that, but um, reading and the practice of reading, getting into that practice of reading really helps exercise that skill. And that becomes more and more relevant as you get more and more content, as you're being expected to understand more and more content as you progress academically, the better you can read and comprehend that, the more successful you're going to be in, in demonstrating your proficiency. So really taking the time to read outside the class for pleasure is really important. And it, I know it's, it's hard when there's so many other distractions out there to be involved in, whether it's uh, watching sports or playing uh, games on um, video games or whatever it may be that you can, can do, um, taking a time out and taking some time to read articles or reading um, magazines or, or books of interest are really, it's really an important practice to get into. So when you're in high school, as you start thinking about the journey into medicine, this is when you should start preparing yourself for that journey. High school, uh, 
colleges will start looking at your high school transcript starting from the 10th grade. And so they're looking to see how you've been progressing in high school, looking at your performance and looking at your high school rank. That will let them know how, um, how studious you were, how much you committed to your studies. And that gives them a good idea of how you're going to perform once you're in college. So you need to start working on um, taking those advanced courses and begin performing uh, and, and putting in the energy to perform well in your classes as early as your 10th grade. Another thing that, that colleges look at, and it's not, it's really kind of a surprise to, to some students is, is they look at absences. If, if you're absent uh, quite often, you're probably not going to be ranked very high because you were, you were missing for most of the content in the class. And so if you weren't committed to going to class in high school, how can they be assured to be committed to going to class when you're in college? So be studious, be, be present, start getting engaged in, in 10th grade if you haven't already, and start working towards developing good study habits and performing well academically. When you become a junior, you can begin to look at colleges that you would like to apply to. So you can start visiting campuses um, across the state or across the country, depending on where your interest lies and, and your, your resources to get there. It's, um, um, now that we're doing everything virtually, it's much easier now to take a tour of a campus virtually. And you start to think about where would I like to study? And so I take a moment and ask the students who are on the panel, how did you decide that University of Texas is where you wanted to go to school? Well, I knew I really, I've, I've been to Austin before a couple of times and I really enjoyed the city here and just the many, you know, activities you can do, go, go to live music, go to cool restaurants. So I knew I wanted to be in Austin. And then uh, my brother-in-law actually, his family, his like siblings, his brothers, he, they all went to UT as well. And, and they were just telling me these stories of how many opportunities there are there. And I just got attracted to it. And I went on a tour and I knew I made the right decision. Um, I guess for me, it was mostly based on also, um, I guess, the student life. Uh, so academics, uh, opportunities, uh, but also financial. Uh, so I knew that, uh, like you said earlier, I couldn't, you know, go out of state because I didn't have the resources. But, uh, but UT did offer me the, the best financial aid package. Um, so I made my decision uh, mostly based through financial um, and also academic uh, opportunities. I agree with Juan as well. It was mainly based on finances. It was um, the most financially affordable for me at the time. And um, I knew that it was a top tier institution. I've known about UT since I could have ever known. I've known it for a very long time. So I knew it was a great school. Um, I knew it would be financially affordable and I really liked the city of Austin. So part of that process is discovery and thinking about your options. Uh, how many of you applied to multiple universities? Two, okay. So, so you, you, you really cast kind of a wide net. You made multiple applications. And then as a result of that, you probably had several choices. You could then decide on which school you wanted to, to attend. So it's really important to begin looking at universities your junior year so that when the applications open up early in your senior year, you can begin that application process. And then once your applications are submitted, you then have the opportunity, hopefully, to have multiple offers come back. The, the worst case scenario is you're, you've waited till the very end of your senior year and you're trying to make up your mind about where to go and you're trying to apply and either you've missed deadlines or you're, you're on a wait list somewhere, you didn't have the opportunity to choose, you're now just waiting, hopefully, that somebody will accept your application. So applying early gives you more opportunities to, to weigh your options, which is, making an informed decision. Also in your junior and senior year, you should start thinking about developing a record of community engagement and community impact, whether it's your high school community, whether it's uh, your faith community or community at large. Think about how you can get engaged in that community to help others. I mentioned earlier that one of the, the motivation, core motivation for many students is that they have a passion for um, helping other people 
and, uh, and, uh, and giving back. And medicine is how they view that as an opportunity, but you can begin that activity of giving back uh, without being a clinician. And it's really starts to give you that connection with your community that hopefully one day you'll serve as a clinician. And so start developing a record of service uh, by getting involved and engaged in your community. When you get to medical school, um, I mean, I'm sorry, when you get to college and you start to think about medical school, this is where we as medical schools begin to look at you as an applicant. And so from high school to college, you were, you were working towards getting into college and the work you did there was, was reviewed by the college for consideration for admission. For us as the medical school, your work in college is what we're really gonna look at in consideration for your, um, your application for medical school. Now, if you've already started developing a foundational knowledge and you've already started engaging in your community and you've continued that behavior in college, then you have a continuation of that record. You have a continuation of that activity and it's, you're only gonna keep building upon that once you get into college. If you're starting from a dead standstill in college, then you're having to start to uh, catch up as opposed to just continuing that, that, um, that pace that you started when you were in high school. So obviously, what do we look for? Uh, we look for academic readiness. We wanna see that you uh, have developed that foundation knowledge to a point where you're gonna have the foundation that, that we expect you to have once you get into medical school. We're not going to reteach a lot of that material, the expectation that you've learned that material and we're gonna begin at the next level. So making the transition from high school to college is really important. And that's oftentimes the most difficult transition because it's a whole different environment. And so your focus as a freshman in your first semester is really to make that transition. You should have your foot on the gas and working as hard as you possibly can for that first semester to get the best grades possible in college because you wanna see what does it take to do well at this level. And once you understand what it takes to, to do well, you can then start calibrating how you, um, how you spend your energy in outside class activities. But that first semester is really focused on making that transition because it'll be much more difficult than it was in high school. That's, that's the order of life. It moves from, it's like uh, if you're an athlete and you're practicing or, or if you're uh, lifting weights, you move from one set of weights to the next set of weights and that set of weights, you keep growing and, and improving. It's the same thing with your education. You keep developing skills and moving to the next level and moving to the next level. So that transition from high school to college is really much more difficult. So it's important that you do that transition well and you spend the energy to do well because once you, once you have a good understanding of what it takes to be successful, it's much easier to build on success than to dig yourself out of a hole later. So if you start with a strong GPA your freshman year and maybe you get a little bit of a bump your sophomore year, it's much easier to recover from that than if you're trying to dig out of a low performing grades in your freshman year. Um, and what should you major in? You should major in whatever you find interesting and, and, and whatever you're passionate about. Um, you can major in any major uh, and still meet the requirements to apply to medical school as long as you take what we call the prerequisite or the core science courses. So you can major in music and take those courses. You can major in business and take those courses. Um, as you prepare for your application to medical school. Um, the key though, is that you wanna major in something that you find interesting and engaging because you probably are going to do better at that than doing something that you think people want you to do. And so you really wanna be sure that you're majoring in something that, that, that really um, excites you. I know that, that our student panel, I think you guys are all from the same department, uh, same major. Um, what drew you to the major of, of biochemistry? Biochemistry was my first choice because I really like biology. And strangely enough, I didn't really get a good uh, chemistry background in high school. So I wanted to challenge myself and see how those two were uh, involved in biochemistry. And how I came to find out now is that biochemistry doesn't really so black and white as both biology and chemistry. It's more about interactions in the cell and protein interactions as well. But I want to really echo what you said about majoring in something that you're passionate about. Luckily, I am passionate about science, but if I were to go back, I'd probably pick something maybe more towards history or the social sciences because I'm, I'm minoring in uh, medicine American studies and that's a really great 
distraction. Well, I wouldn't say distraction, but like a, a palate cleanser from all the heavy core soto science. And I learn more about policy and health and equity. Um, I would say that um, what drove me to be a bio biology major um, is that I kind of gained a, um, a desire and a liking of biology um, throughout my high school years. Um, so I believe that that kind of sparked me to go towards biology um, was my experiences in the classroom um, and kind of my desire to know more um, about the topic uh, going into college. And just to um, echo what um, Salvador said, I am a biochemistry major and it started um, freshman year when I realized that I equally like biology and chemistry because at first I thought I only liked biology, but after my freshman year, I realized I like both equally and learning how biology and chemistry interact was really interesting to me. Um, but the great thing about pursuing um, medicine or being a pre-med student is that you don't only have to pursue science related courses or activities. Um, for example, my certificate, which is essentially a minor, um, is social inequality, health and policy. So learning about how certain social structures inform health and policy um, is also another interest of mine. And I think it's, it's important. Sometimes we get stuck in the idea that you only have one pathway to medical school. And sometimes we use the term pre-med uh, as a major. And in truth, there really is no major as pre-med. There's a pathway called pre-medicine, but it means that you're majoring in uh, a topic like biochemistry or history or business. And you are pursuing courses that help prepare you for the application to medical school. Um, so the, when you say I'm majoring in pre-med, that could mean anything. You're on a pathway to go to medical school, um, but you can major in any topic that you want to major in. Uh, and that's really important. Uh, and the reason why it's really important that you get good advising as a freshman in college. Each of you, when you start uh, at, each, at any university, will have an opportunity to go through freshman orientation and will have uh, at every uh, institution in Texas, I can speak uh, uh, to the absolute, they all have advisors for the health professions. And so the, the thing you want to do is you want to make that connection early on. You want to be sure to connect with the health professions advisor to be sure that you're on the right path for getting the prerequisite courses and that you can learn more about what support services are available to you as a pre-health student as well. So getting advising is, and getting good advising and engaging your advisor early is really important. So at the, the, the rule of thumb is at orientation, identify who your health professions advisors are. And then that first week or first month of school, you make an appointment to go visit them. And then eventually you'll start spending a lot more time in their office as you start to grow as, a, as an applicant. You wanna continue your tradition of involvement and engagement that you started when you were in high school. You wanna begin to get engaged on your campus. You want to begin to, to look at opportunities to, to be part of the um, pre-health, pre-med club or part of the student government, student leadership, the health advisory council, whatever it may be that you're interested in, you wanna to start to get engaged on your campus because it really speaks to your ability to collaborate with others. And if anything, medicine is, is a team sport and the ability to collaborate and work with others, uh, both in a, a team, and leadership position are important the skills to start developing. And you start developing those in college. So you wanna st start to get engaged uh, probably in your second semester or first semester of sophomore year, second semester freshman, second, uh, first semester sophomore year, start getting engaged in activities on your campus after you've learned what it takes to do well academically in your classes. Then you can start to figure out how to balance your time and still have a healthy time slot there for uh, going to the gym, exercising with friends, having pizza parties, whatever it is that you want to do to relax. But having a balance of those activities is important. Uh, what are you guys involved in right now? Uh, well, currently right now, I'm, I'm involved with uh, the C. Del Med tours. And so, uh, you know, me and Juan, Juan, Brianna, we do uh, tours for Bell Medical School whenever uh, organizations on campus reach out to us and want a virtual tour. And also we are part of a, another organization called the Del Med Pre-Health and Diversity Scholars, which is essentially a place, a community we built for 
socioeconomically disadvantaged pre-health students who are coming into UT and just to facilitate this community for them that provides opportunities such as shadowing hours or uh, other jobs, internships on campus. Did you guys start that organization? Sure did, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you took the initiative and created something from scratch, which is, you know, which is a great opportunity in colleges. If there's not something that you want to be involved in or that you're interested in, you can start that organization. I guess my only question for you guys is who did you choose as president in your first year? <laughs> no, uh, he, <laughs> yeah, my president, our president, he's not in the call, but his name is uh, Wisdom. Oh, okay. Oh, I, is, uh, vice president. I, I met Wisdom this afternoon uh, at, at a, another virtual meeting earlier today. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So um, you guys saw an opportunity, uh, did find something that really matched that and you began that organization on your own. And that really is, speaks to the kinds of opportunities that are available to all students at the university. Um, and, and that's what is important because you, you wanna continue that tradition of engagement and you saw something that you wanted to be involved in. Um, the other part of that involvement is starting to get exposure to healthcare through, um, shadowing or observing healthcare professionals uh, in, in the field practicing medicine. And the reason why that's important is that so far you've developed, you have this interest in medicine. You, you may have been exposed to medicine through your own healthcare experience or observing uh, something that a family member went through. But now you, you have started down this path and it's time to start to develop that, that uh, understanding of what it means to be a, a professional uh, in this in healthcare, uh, from their perspective, and the reason for that is you're beginning a journey that's going to take a lifetime. You're going to begin a journey that that really means that you're going to be a student of science and medicine for the rest of your life. And it's important for you to understand what that career is all about. If you're only experienced with uh, being a physician is what you've seen on television, then, then that's not a real, very realistic experience or real, realistic understanding of what healthcare and healthcare delivery is going to be like. And you're going to be so sorely disappointed about what life really means as a clinician, what you do day in and day out. So you don't want to get down too far in this journey and realize, oh, that's not what I want to do. I didn't realize that it meant that that's what a physician does day in and day out. So getting healthcare experience gives you exposure to medicine so you can better understand what it's like to be a physician day in and day out. And that gives you an understanding of, of is this what I really want to do? And it's perfectly okay to say, you know what? This journey is not the one I thought it was. I wanna do something different. It's better to make that decision in, while you're in college learning about yourself and learning about the professions than to do it much later when it's much harder to change the direction of your journey. And so getting healthcare experience is gonna be important, an important part of, uh, of your college experience. Yes, Juan. Um, I just had a quick question. So um, I feel like this is a question that a lot of undergrads and a lot of maybe high schoolers had um, to, uh, back in March when the pandemic started. Um, do medical schools uh, acknowledge virtual shadowing hours, shadowing hours um, and are these uh, useful? So anything that gives you insight to the profession from a professional's perspective is informative to you. And that's, that's what really you're trying to, to do. You're trying to, to understand, you know, what does it mean when you say, I have got to go to the electronic medical record and spend the next five hours charting my patients that I just saw for the first five hours? And what does that really mean for a health professional? And, and how, does, how does that dynamic um, balance with their, their satisfaction with what they do. And that, that you know, has to come in many different ways. The, um, the thing about the pandemic is, is that it's a universal experience. It's not something that's happening in isolation. And so everybody is really experiencing you know, how do I navigate, how do I get this understanding without uh, or, or with the current constraints that are on us as a society. And so virtual shadowing is a creative way to do that. And, and it's, it's something that I don't think anybody thought about uh, before the pandemic. And it's, it's really interesting that that's come about. There are gonna be a lot of other creative outlets like that are come from this experience that will probably become norms in the future. 
Um, but the goal is to get as much exposure to healthcare as possible, um, not for our benefit, but for your benefit, so that you understand what, it's, what it means day in and day out to be a, a healthcare provider. Hopefully, and, and I fully anticipate that by the time uh, students who are freshmen in college um, uh, or who will start their freshman year next year, hopefully we will be out of the woods as far as this is concerned and we'll go back to, to more um, traditional ways of getting that exposure. But it comes in a lot of different ways. I've had students who have volunteered for hospice um, organizations where they, they simply went in and were, um, Kind of, they just had conversations with patients who were in hospice to give the, the, their caretaker a break. And they got more insight on compassionate care through that experience than probably any other way. Um, I, I've, I've worked with individuals who have worked in um, uh, cancer units teaching kids, um, you know, doing art projects with kids who are in cancer units. And, and that's not direct healthcare experience, but they're working with patients or going through um, treatment. And so it gave them a perspective about healthcare that, that is unique. So there are a lot of creative ways to get that exposure and to get a better understanding. But what you wanna be able to do is when somebody asks you, why medicine? That you can talk about your life journey that so far that you've been on and why you, you still have this passion and what you've seen that reinforces that passion. And when you get to the point of where the medical school begins to look at your application, that's what really we're looking at. We're looking at this idea of cognitive and non-cognitive, meaning you're looking at how well you've developed your foundational knowledge, which we know that through grades and test scores and other activities and trends. But we also wanna know what you've done to develop that humanistic side, those, those attributes that we think are important for being a physician. Your understanding of medicine, your ability to give back to your community or, or, or past behavior that indicates you give back to your community your desire to uh, help change systems of care. Uh, there are a lot of things that fall under this, this idea of, of non-cognitive, but it's a balance. We're looking for people who have really a strength in both areas. They're strong academically, and they're also um, demonstrated through their, their past behavior activities that align with what we're trying to do. They've done things that speak to uh, being a great clinician. And that's why medicine is an art. Uh, it's a science, but it's also an art. And it's also important to not forget the humanistic con connection, um, how you're caring for patients in their, in, who are the most vulnerable uh, point in their life when you're caring for them. And so we look for these activities you've been engaged in to see how uh, you have explored these other aspects of, uh, of yourself, whether it's in leadership, it's in discovery, innovation, teamwork, or community impact, and those things that you've done in those areas. And it's really that balance. So motivation for medicine, why, your service to others, your community, leadership, innovation creative, community engagement, resilience, determination. Well, I tell you that, that this year, resilience and determination are probably gonna be the theme words for, for all applicants as you guys struggle through uh, an unprecedented time in our history. And uh, your ability to, to work and collaborate with others, which is really important because it is a team sport. Um, it's important to, to practice behavior that, that moves you towards um, being successful at whatever you want to, to, to pursue. And it, it means that you have to be engaged. Uh, you need to practice what we call habits of mind uh, and that's being persistent. You're persisting every time. And, and again, we're in this situation where you, you an unprecedented uh, shutdown of our, of our society. And, and how do you persist through that? Uh, and managing impulsivity, the idea that, you know, I can go out and, and, and have a great time or I can stay and finish this work I need to finish so that I can move to the next step in, in my, um, my education. So understanding how to balance that. Listening to others with understanding and empathy, and that's important. It's not sympathy, but empathy. Uh, how do you listen to others who have a different opinion than you have? And how do you give them the space to express that and listen to that? Being flexible, um, thinking about thinking, which is an interesting uh, concept, the idea about how do I process information? How can I be better at processing information? 
striving at accuracy and precision, trying to do the best you can every single time as opposed to just saying, oh, that's good enough. Um, posing problems and asking why. And if you hear somebody say, because we've always done it that way, that might be a clue to say, mm, let's think about that again. Um, so you can read these here about uh, the things you can do to be actively pursuing um, improvement and these habits of mind that, that keep you actively engaged. Um, the one I would like to, to end with and the one I think is important to always practice and that is to respond with wonderment and awe at all times. To look at a situation and, and, and think about um, how momentous or how uh, interesting it is or to be in awe of just people's ability to transform and to adapt. It's, on, it's been on display in, in such a way this last year. Our whole society is learning how to adapt, adapt to, to a pandemic. And it's amazing how quickly or how successfully we've been able to do that and leverage technologies that we never thought were even useful before into something that we use continuously. And so I just always step back and think about how, um, how, how uh, interesting the world is. And so always look at the world with that, uh, that lens of wonderment, uh, because I think that will help you be inspired. So I'll take, if we can, if you guys have any questions for me. Hey, I have a question. So I know you mentioned that it's best to look early for what you want to, uh, what school you want to apply to for college. Would you say that same logic goes towards medical school? Trying to research early what medical schools you want to apply to? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. You can, every, so, in medical education, there are uh, standards uh, that have to be met in order for an individual to progress through so they can be licensed to practice medicine. And every accredited medical school meets that criteria. So you can, you, any medical school you go to, you can be a successful physician once you graduate from that school. So um, the, you know, the first thing you're trying to do is, is to become that physician. So applying to multiple medical schools is really important and um, you know, it, in, in, in getting accepted is really important to move to the next step. The, each school though, within their mission tend to have unique, um, a unique focus. Some schools are much more heavier uh, focused on research some schools are more focused on educating physicians who will practice in rural settings and some who will practice in urban settings. So when you're researching a school, you're really looking at what's that distinction. Um, and that comes in a, in a couple of flavors. One is the curriculum, the way the curriculum is designed, as well as what is their focus as a, a teaching focus at that institution. Um, and so you start to figure out what, where, it, would I best fit in as far as where would I think I'd be the most successful academically uh, and, and on my journey to getting into medical school. Um, so if you have the opportunity to make a choice, and, and I think one of you said you, know, you had several choices to make to get into undergraduate, the goal is that you have several choices to decide which medical school you wanna to go to. And that's where you're making that distinction about the environment uh, where, where the students, uh, how the students feel the environment is and how it's conducive to the kind of learning you want to do or how well you, or how you prefer to be taught and to learn. And is the focus in an area that you're interested in. Um, if you uh, choose some place that doesn't have that focus and you might really find yourself disappointed that you're not really focusing on that area as much as you thought you would. You still have to master the, the, the um, the content and the proficiency necessary to become a licensed physician. And you'll do that at any medical school. This is really more nuanced than to where do you think you would um, align best with the mission of that institution. And you can begin that journey uh, by, by starting that search and looking at schools, but also reaching out to uh, former classmates who are in those schools now too. But ultimately, um, one of the great things about, about Texas is that we have 
outstanding medical schools. We have uh, 11 public medical schools in Texas now, and um, each one of those schools can train you to be an outstanding physician. And uh, we're very fortunate to have so many outstanding schools in the state. Um, I have a quick question. Um, so I, I feel like this question is something that is asked a lot um, with uh, incoming freshmen. Um, but how important is research experience um, to the medical school application? Um, it is, uh, it depends on the institution. If the institution is much more focused on research, then they may weigh that a little more heavily. Uh, for us, we're, we are, um, we're, we're more interested in discovery and um, uh, creativity. And that can come in the form of research, but it can come in other ways as well. And so uh, I think what's really relevant is, is, are you interested in research? If you are interested in research, then find an opportunity where you can really get exposed to research and you can contribute to the body of work in that lab. If you're just doing it out of a matter of, ex of a practice to go do and you spend your whole day just doing the same thing over and over again and you don't really care about what's going on in the lab, then you're gonna find it very um, uh, disheartening to go do that day in and day out. So if it's something that you're interested in and you have an interest in pursuing, then find some place and find a, a professor who's doing work in the areas that you have an interest in and try to get into that lab. And then try to, to engage in, in research, I can first learn how, to, how the lab works and what they're, they're working on. And you can't just go in and start doing research right away, uh, but try to get involved in the, um, uh, in, in the research community in that lab to begin doing independent research in the camp. Okay, and I, so I, at this point I need to, concludes, I've got to go to another meeting. Um, okay, um, well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. DeBow and our student panel. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to do this and thank you for everyone uh, joining us today in our Dell Med Admissions um, presentation. And we have resources on our page if you wanna check out Dell Med Admissions criteria, other resources um, that we've put together and we hope to see you next year at um, Explore UT 2022. Um, and again, thank you so much.